Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code. Today we'll be discussing CSS positioning and layers. We'll see what's there inside these topics and how we can use CSS along with HTML to structure any web page. But before we start, I hope the screen is clearly visible and the audio is fine. If yes, please type in yes and if there are any issues, do let us know in the chat section so that we can resolve them straight away. So let's wait for some more seconds so that some more people can join us. Until then, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So great, I think we can get started now. We all know HTML is used to structure a web page, right? Now let's assume a scenario where certain elements are present on a web page. Now, what we can do is we can add those elements to the web page or we can change the structure of that particular web page with the help of HTML. But we have to position them as well, right? So let's take an example of a navigation bar. In simple words, the navigation bar is present on every website out there, right? And it remains fixed at the top of the web page. No matter if we scroll down the content, the navigation bar remains fixed. So HTML elements appears in a sequence they are introduced, one immediately after the other, in the flow of a typical web page. CSS can be used to break up the natural flow and push items into odd positions or even overlap one another. So CSS plays a vital role. The top, right, bottom and left properties are used to position the elements after the positioning technique has been set up using the CSS position property. Each positioned element's size can be adjusted using the width and the height parameters. The height and the width parameters we have already used in the previous videos as well. So the CSS position property is really important when it comes to creating the layout of a web page. In this tutorial, you will find out how CSS pro position property is important. So let's move on to the programming part directly and you guys will understand it much better. So the CSS position property is used to position any HTML element, right? So there are four different CSS positioning properties. So we can put the values as static, absolute, fixed, and relative. Don't worry, we'll go through all four of these CSS positioning values, or we can say all four CSS positioning properties. So let's start with CSS static position. So this is a by default position for HTML elements. As you can see here, we have a single heading present on our web page right now, which is CSS positioning and layers. You can see this is the default position of this particular heading. We haven't used any position property in the CSS part or anything, but this property is present over here, right? So there's some gap from the top and some from the left. Now, what we can do is we can use a class over here. Fine. So let's use the class first. Let's use the class as static. Fine, save it and here you can see nothing happens till now. Now we are going to use or we can say access this particular element with the help of class name. So the static class is there. Now what we can do is we can write position. Position we can define as static. Save it. You can see nothing changes. Now the good part is if we are right going to write over here top as 20 pixels and save it, you can see still nothing changes because the top property does not work with static position. Similar thing goes for the left property as well. So if we write over here left as 30 pixels, save it, nothing will happen because the position we have already set to static. So static is the default positioning of any HTML element it's no different than the default positioning basically. So there is no point of using this particular position. The next CSS positioning property we have is the CSS fixed positioning. The fixed positioning property helps to put the text fixed on the browser. Remember, we took the example of a navigation bar. It remains fixed there with the help of the fixed position property only. So this fixed test is positioned relative to the browser window and it will not move. So let's go through the example of positioning property. What we can say fixed positioning property. We are going to take an example over here. We are going to write class is fixed. CSS. What we can write over here. Fixed 
positioning position let's say so this position is fixed now what we can do is we can add some para over here so let's say we have a paragraph of thousand words thousand words will be enough save it save it and here you can see the paragraph now see this thing clearly the fixed position property we are we haven't used the fixed property yet so this if you are going to scroll down over a browser you can see it scrolls down it's not fixed as of now now I'll let you guys understand it how it works so let's remove the static from here save it now and check once again so it's not working right now now we are going to write over here fixed and we are going to define the position as fixed save it now it will remain fixed it's not there for other CSS other HTML elements it's not present over here you can see it's fixed even if we scroll down the browser so yeah here it is fixed now let me just make it clear for you guys border we are going to write over here one pixel solid and black then we have background color background color we are going to define some background color as yellow so here you can see it's visible now now try to scroll down you can see everything scrolls down but this particular element we are not able to scroll it down this is because we have fixed it right the position is fixed for this particular element this element is not existing for other HTML elements now it will remain there it will remain there fixed fine so this is how we can use the CSS fixed positioning the third one we have is the CSS relative positioning now what is CSS relative positioning the relative positioning property is used to set the elements relative to its normal position so what's the normal position let's take the example of this particular HTML element this is its normal position so if we are going to define it as what we can say relative we can make certain changes to the normal position so let's do it and we are going to change the class name here for this relative save it and here we are going to write dot relative position as relative okay save it and here you can see there's no difference define left as 10 pixels save it here you can see the difference left is now it's a little on the right hand side 10 pixels are given to it this particular heading keep it 100 save it and here you can see let me just take the scroll bar over here you can see the gap so this gap is 100 pixels now so this is the left property now so what we can do is we can also give this CSS so what we can do is we can also give left as minus 10 so let's see what happens if we are going to write over here minus 10 pixels you can see now you can see it stick to the left corner right there's no gap minus 10 means all the left hand side gap is now taken away from that particular heading so the property left as minus 10 subtract 10 pixels from the elements original left position similarly the left as 10 pixels or we can say 30 pixels any value we want to give but the value should be positive it means that 30 pixels or n number of pixels to the elements it will add up sorry so what what I want to convey here is it will add 30 pixels to the elements original left position fine so if we write over here let's suppose 50 pixels save it it will add 50 pixels to the original position so yeah that was the original position it adds 50 pixel to that fine so this is how the relative property relative positioning property actually works in CSS the fourth one and the final one we are only left with is the absolute positioning so the absolute positioning is used to position an element relative to the first parent element that has a position other than static if no such element is found the containing block is HTML it sounds a bit tricky right so let's go through the example directly so for that what we are going to do is we are going to remove okay just let me remove this particular paragraph I don't want you guys to get confused 
remove them as well okay we are going to keep these two headings for start save it so we have these two headings present over here now what we are going to do is we are going to use the absolute property within one heading we can either choose so here you can see the fixed position property is present over here so we are going to use it within the h1 tag so we are going to write here class is absolute save it now move to the css part dot absolute we have accessed this particular class we have to write here position as not a relative but absolute now keep an eye over here so the moment we'll save this particular program you can see they inter interchange their position so now the absolute position is present so the heading with class as absolute is present on the downside or we can say on the bottom and the other heading is present at the top remove this from here save it and here you can see css fixed position is present over here and this particular is heading is present over here now just undo it save the program and here you can see it interchanged again this was just uh, just an example of how the css absolute positioning actually works now we can manage it accordingly so we have to use the left right top bottom properties left let's say we are going to define here as 150 pixels it will give 150 pixels to the original position and it will add up basically top as 250 pixels it will again add up 250 pixels to the original position so here you can see 250 pixels are added and 150 pixels are added from the left so this is how the absolute positioning in CSS actually works now let's move ahead and now we'll discuss layers so elements that are relocated outside the documents natural flow may end up overlapping one another as we have as we saw in the fixed position property the elements were overlapping each other right so using the z index property it can be determined which of these positioned items should be at the top and which which should be at the bottom so each elements position within the stack when it is overlapped depends on the value of the z index positive numerical value suggests moving the element to the top of the stack whereas negative numerical value suggests moving the element to the bottom of the stack so let's say we have three values one two and three one will be present at the bottom two will be present at the center and three will be present at the top so let me give you a simple example of layers let's say we have three elements and we want to stack them one over the other in other words we want to create layers so let's go through the programming part directly what we'll do is we'll create divisions over here we are going to create three rectangles let's say fine so we are going to write here div plus as for the first one we are going to write center or we can say middle for the second one we are going to write class as bottom and for the third one we are going to write classes okay div classes top so we have three divisions save it and here you can see nothing happens till now now we are going to access them first we have the center then we have the dot bottom and then we have dot top fine so these three class names we have now what we are going to do is we are going to create rectangles background color let's say background color for the center one or the middle one is going to be aqua and then we have width width we are going to define as 300 pixels then we have height again we are going to create rectangles right so we are going to keep the height as 100 pixel position this particular z index property works with relative so we are going to write here relative top we are going to define as 10 pixels it will add 10 pixels to the original position remember it left left we are going to set as 80 pixel it will add 80 pixels to the left of the original position the final one is z index z index this is the center one we can use two fine we are going to use one two and three save it and here you can see we have a rectangle present over here on the browser 
now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create two more rectangles so we are going to copy it from here we are going to paste it here we are going to change the color so let's say the color is red height and width and position will remain the same the top and bottom will change because we want to stack them one over the other and I want you guys to see them stacked so we are going to write over here minus 60 pixels for the bottom one and we are going to write over here left as 35 pixels fine z index we are going to write as 1 save it and here you can see so it's working perfectly fine again we are going to put it over here we are going to change the color to in different color any color of your choice you guys can use I'm using yellow over here we are going to change the values of top and left so top we are going to set as minus 220 pixels and left we are going to set as 120 pixels let's say the index is going to be 3 for this particular rectangle save it and here you can see these three boxes are stacked one over the other the z index for the yellow one is 3 that's why it is at the top the z index for aqua is but was the z index 2 that's why it's in the middle and the z index for red is 1 that's why it is present at the bottom so the relative property the relative position property plays a vital role over here because we are going to use the position of a parent element so this is how we can use these properties to create the structure of our web page now positioning and layers are by far the most difficult part of CSS to understand but we covered the basics of both in this video I hope you guys understood the basics so we'll see them in action when we create a web page layout now if you feel that we have missed out on, on some important topics that we were supposed to cover in this particular tutorial then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and we'll have our questions answered. Also we'll consider every suggestion provided by you guys. So with that this is Kaushal signing off until next time. Thank you.